Overrated arm exercise number two is the waiter curl. Because obviously that comes from a lack of understanding and knowledge or credentials. And so finally, Jeff getting part of the drama. Normally he avoids these things. He doesn't like calling people out. Doesn't like talking about drama. But finally he's putting his foot down. How's this for drama? Jeff Cavalier makes a video, calls out the worst YouTuber ever. And it's not Coach Greg. Because it seems that the newest buzzword in fitness right now is suboptimal. And so one of Jeff's pet peeves is he hates the word suboptimal. There are tons of exercises you can choose from to build your body. And some are more optimal than others. But just because something's suboptimal doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. Doesn't mean that it's not good. And it doesn't mean that it should be replaced with another exercise. And so Sean Naljewick makes a video and says eight overrated arm exercises. Overrated arm exercise number two is the waiter curl. And listen, Sean is not wrong. There are better exercises overall than the waiter curl in terms of building your biceps. But that doesn't mean that the waiter curl is ineffective, inefficient, and that you should never do it. And so the problem is that Sean doesn't just say that there are better exercises out there. He basically says you should never do it. And uses a bunch of word vomit that meant absolutely nothing. I have no idea what he's talking about. And Jeff's calling him out for it. I actually put a video up a while back defending the effectiveness essentially of the biceps waiter curl. And so finally, Jeff getting part of the drama. Normally he avoids these things, he doesn't like calling people out, doesn't like talking about drama, but finally he's putting his foot down. And so many of you are thinking, yeah, Coach Greg, you're always so negative. You're doing this, negative this, negative that. Yeah, I talk about negative topics and I try to make something good out of it. I bring up something that was bad and I try to inform you about it and hopefully you can make some improvements because of that video. Sean, overall, he's just negative. The tone of voice, and I know I wanted to talk about voice tone, but he just isn't kind. The lack of knowledge by the influencer or a lack of full knowledge. There's a big difference between the two. Sometimes it's a case of you know something about a topic, but you don't know everything. And when you make a video talking about it, it's clear to people who are actually smart that understand these things that you made a mistake that what you're saying is just nonsense and in this video i'm sure you're going to agree with that sean naljwick well he made up a bunch of mumbo jumbo one of the phrases that was actually used and this is what we call word salad when someone tries to sound smarter than they are and so sean naljwick he's trying to sound smarter than he actually is people do that on youtube all the time me in comparison i try to dumb everything down i try to seem more dumber than last time right I look pretty dumb, don't I? Produces a form of negative feedback from the instability at the shoulder and elbow joint, which is easy to mistake for increased tension on the biceps. No, it's not. It's just dumb. And it's just dumb. And look, for once, me and Jeff on the same team. Now, I know this is going to upset the diehard fans of a certain fitness YouTuber who unfortunately made this exercise really popular, but... And notice how he won't even say his name. It's going to upset the fans of a certain YouTube blah, blah, blah. Are these guys pussies? Can they not say their actual names? Notice how Sean nor Jeff actually says the person's name. Does it make any difference? It would be like someone saying, yeah, there's this YouTube guy. He has over 1.7 million followers. He's a five foot six man. I have BB Pro and he sounds like the parent from Aladdin. Do you not think everyone knows that's me? And so just say his name. Say, Jeff made this video. Jeff said this. Sean said that. Why are we speaking in riddles? This movement doesn't properly line up the resistance with the curling path of the biceps, which would naturally want to curl outward from this position versus being stuck on a fixed vertical line. And so is Sean suggesting that to increase the size of your biceps, the biceps needs to curl outwards like this towards your shoulder? Think of it. If you're grabbing a straight barbell, you're curling it upwards. The biceps are not turning out as you're curling it. If this were truly the case, that the arms needed to go outwards as you curl up, you would have to be forced to use dumbbells. But we know this is not true. Then ditch the waiter curl and just perform a regular dumbbell curl where the shoulder, elbow, and wrist are all aligned. Jeff could have literally sat there, had Sean speak nonsense, end the video with no. And that would have been it. Because obviously that comes from a lack of understanding and knowledge or credentials. Obviously, even though Jeff didn't say Sean's name, it's very clear he's talking about Sean. He's literally quoting him exactly. He's not even paraphrasing. And so someone in the comment section said he was talking about Johnny. Really? He's literally quoting what Sean said. It's not Johnny. And so Jeff says Sean lacks the credentials, the knowledge, the intelligence. He doesn't know what he's talking about, essentially. People might say the chest supported row is suboptimal. 
And so just because something's suboptimal doesn't mean it's not a great exercise. Probably the squat is the king of all leg exercise. Doesn't mean that if you don't squat and only perform the leg press that you're training suboptimally. That perhaps for you, squats are bad. You have a sore back, knees, you can't do it. And so not everyone can do every single exercise. And to simply make videos saying suboptimal this, suboptimal that, wording out mumbo jumbo that makes no sense to try to sound smart and convince the world that that exercise is a stupid, well, it's not going to fly, at least not with Jeff Cavalier. And so exactly in an exercise such as this, I can't do bent rows. My lower back, I'm throwing it out all the time. I have very difficult time doing squats, deadlifts, bent rows, and so on. And so I always need to do chest supported movements. Maybe it's not optimal. Perhaps I should be doing conventional deadlifts because sumo cheating. Well, when I did conventional deadlifts, I hurt my back more often than last time. And so is it really suboptimal for me to choose an exercise that allows me to avoid getting injured? I beg to differ. I don't think so. I don't like the exercise as much as I like a barbell curl, but I really, really like the exercise. And so Sean in his video presented it as if Jeff had done something bad. Oh, unfortunately, some guy y'all like, he popularized this exercise, but it's not good. That's BS. It would be like saying that Coach Greg tells people if they hurt their backs that perhaps they can do leg press, leg extensions, and so on. Just because there's another exercise that you can do instead of the favorite exercise or the king of the exercises doesn't mean that it's not a valuable exercise. It hits all the high notes. It accomplishes everything that the biceps need to accomplish in the exercise, specifically the long head of the biceps, to give you a really good option. And so Jeff says, look, I explain exactly why this is effective. I didn't use a bunch of word salad as Sean did. And so you can tell Jeff is not impressed, perhaps more mad than he is at Coach Greg. And so perhaps you don't like Coach Greg. Why? Because he sells Ecti Builder? Because he has a harder than last time, as in harder than last time supplement for the downstairs that he sells testosterone supplements? or GO2 Max that have a freaking cookbook that's more expensive than everyone else. I believe in these supplements, have done the research, shown how it can help make significant changes, and no, you're not gonna put on 20 pounds of muscle the way you would with performance enhancing drugs, but it can still make a difference. And so when Sean complains, beta alanine, itchy butthole, and so on, is it really that bad? Do you really not think that it actually works? And so if you want any of these supplements, remember I have protein bars, pre-workout, pre-workout pump, creatine, beta, I can't name all. There's like 40 some supplements. Also clothing line, the cookbooks, training books, coaching plans by me and my team. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment for your algorithm. Watch one of the boobs, follow me on Instagram, Greg Doucette, IB Pro. Don't forget, code Greg gets you 10% off everything. If you don't have any money, we've got a free diet and training program. Go to the website, first and last name. Also enter your email address. Voila, you got it. And until next time, I am out.